So, yes, we have the sequence of random variables converging to another random variable in some different notions. It is not always necessary that if you have xn's which have some distributions and the limiting distributions of the random variable, limit random variable need not be always the same or even need not be the of the same nature. For example, let us say if I have a sequence of random variables which are all exponential distributed or uh, Poisson distributed something and not necessary that the limit distribution is also of the same nature, it is also either exponential or Poisson, okay. it could be something different. But it so happens that when we have a sequence of random variables where each of the random variable is Gaussian, the limit distribution is also always Gaussian. Maybe the parameters will change, but at least the nature of the limit distribution is still a Gaussian random variable. So, I will just that binomial, in binomial decision if n goes to infinity, yeah. it becomes Poisson decision. Right, so it change, right. Uh, that is the yeah, that is a one good example. So, where each of the random variable could be binomial, but the limiting could be something different not necessarily binomial it has changed its characterization. So, but if all this random variables happens to be Gaussian then the limiting distribution is necessarily again Gaussian ok. Maybe as I said the parameters could be different the mean and the variance could be different, but it is still going to be Gaussian distribution ok. Next whatever we discussed so far things were fine like to define this convergences I always define with respect to the limit right. Like I said x n converges to x in mean squared probability or whatever, but uh, is the knowing the limit random variable is necessary to just define convergence. So, for example, let us forget the random variable and all probability just focus on our simple deterministic sequences. I know x n uh, let us say I have a sequence of a n's which converges to some a that is fine, but just looking without knowing the limit can I say my sequence a n converges is it necessary that always I need to know the limit before to tell what uh, whether it converges or not. So, have people heard about Cauchy? criteria Cauchy sequence yes. Cauchy criteria what Cauchy criteria says any two n, n minus n is that, that does that involve limit no, no right. No. So, to define a limit whether the sequence converges I really always no need to know the limit limiting value it is enough if they it the sequence itself some satisfies properties. If the sequence satisfies some properties I can say it converges maybe I do not know what is the limit, but I all I can guarantee is that it, it converges to something. So, same can be done here to a sequence of random variables. You may uh, most of the times it may be difficult to guess what is the limiting random variable or what is the limiting distribution, but your sequence may be such that it is I am able to check some conditions which will tell at least it converges. What it converges is a later headache. First, let us worry about whether it converges, and then once we convince ourselves as it converges, maybe we can think about what is the limit it converges. So, for that, we have similar notion of Cauchy sequences in this with a sequence of random variable. So, in our uh, classic setting or with in the deterministic setting, let us say if I have a sequence of a n's, what is the Cauchy criteria for convergence here? Let us say for all epsilon greater than 0, 
there exist n epsilon such that for all m n n epsilon right so if this condition happens i know that the sequence converges it's just that i don't know the limit what is that okay now now we are going to state simply all the four notions of convergence we have in terms of this cauchy convergence criteria okay i'm just going to state that as result Yeah, so x n converges almost surely here is the same as testing this kind of yeah. this is equivalent of Cauchy criteria for our random variables. Oh, sorry, it should be outside. This is incorrect. So, how to write this just a minute let me change to infinity. Okay. So, this is exactly analog version of the Cauchy criteria for my almost sure convergence. So, earlier I needed to know the limiting random variable x. But I do not worry about that here in the Cauchy criteria. What I look is take a pair of random variables and let them go to infinity, and uh, if that goes to 0, and the probability of all this omegas that satisfy this condition is 1, then I am going to call this um, it converges almost surely. But I, I am not specifying which random variable it is converging, it converges to something. Similarly, convergence and probability is again defined like this. So, you see what we have basically done is earlier x n we had x the limit right now that x is replaced by x m again another point in the sequence and uh, same thing here also we are going to look at x n minus x m the difference being greater than epsilon and uh, that goes to 0 then we are going that if that limit goes to 0 then we are going to call that conversion probability to some random uh, variable. So, same thing for convergence in mean squared sense also. So, notice that when I say convergence in mean squared sense, it automatically assumes that my x n's are such that their second moment is bounded less than or equal to. So, that is already implied in, in this condition C. Okay. So, we will just uh, skip the proof of this, it is uh, just analog to how you prove. Uh, how uh, in the in the deterministic sequence how the Cauchy criteria implies the convergence is same thing but you have to worry about all this uh, constructing the sides epsilon delta business and also uh, changing the limits appropriately so you you can look into the book for details here we can't that is the cray right in the uh, in the so the when you go from almost sure to P, we could. So, what do you mean by interchanging probability and uh, limit here? No, we cannot uh, usually. For to, to, impl to do that, we have stated a specific condition. Like if you are looking at limit as n tends to infinity probability of B n, right. If the sequence B n are such that they are monotonically increasing, then I can interchange that was what we call as continuity of probability. If I do not have such a structure on the events that is BNs, in general I cannot do this, you have to be careful there. So, it is not in general true that we can interchange limit and probability, you may also face a case with where you have to interchange limit and expectation. So, in you cannot do this. So, for when we can interchange limit and probability we have already stated 
we are going to state later in the next class when we can interchange limit and expectation. Okay, this can be done only under certain criteria and under some conditions. So fine, we have for this convergence of random variables we have this Cauchy criteria now. Now, is it possible that we can uh, similar criteria if we can if we know something about the correlation of the random variables. So, I have a sequence of random variables right I can look into their uh, correlations basically take a pair x n n and m I can look at their correlation x n and x n into x m take the product and then look at their expectation that is the correlation for us right. So, the next result says that yes there is some connection like that. So, this is called correlation version of of the Cauchy criteria for mean squared convergence. Okay, the the statement is so. What now it says is, let's take a sequence of random variables which are finite second moment. Then there exists an x which is the limit in of the sequence in the mean squared sense if and only if this limit converges now. Now, what is this sequence? This is the correlation sequence. If this correlations can exist and it has some finite value, then this is true. Okay. Okay. Now, let's see uh, why this is true. We'll quickly argue this. So now, let's prove first if part. So, do you, under, do you uh, see the difference between part C here and uh, this result here? So, part C here said that yes, Xn converges if this Cauchy criteria holds, but now this is replacing this Cauchy criteria by this correlation criteria, where you are now testing something on the correlations of the sequences. Okay? So, as so if so, let us say this limit as m n tends to infinity is some value c and that is finite. So, this is the hypothesis, right? Like it is exists and finite, let us assume that to be some c and it is a finite value. Then, what we will do is just let us apply. this condition here and then this is if you just expand this you are going to get x n square minus 2. This is for any n m. And minus plus expectation of x m square. Now, if I want to argue that this guy converges in mean squared sense, I need to show that as n m tends to infinity, this quantity goes to 0, right? That is the definition of my mean squared convergence. Now, I know that if I let n m go to infinity, this expectation go to infinity, this product, this correlation term that is my hypothesis. What, what I can say about uh, this x n square and uh, x m square? 
So, in this limit when I am letting n m go to infinity right, I could as well set n equals to m and let that limit go to infinity right. In that case is this, this, this guy will have the same limit as this. So, you can just check that they will have the same limit. In this case as n m go to infinity I can just verify that this is 2 minus 2 c plus c and this is going to be 0. So, that is why no I am talking about uh, here expectation of uh, x n square. So, fine see there are two things here you are not setting n equals to m here when you are letting n m go to infinity. You can arbitrarily let n m go to infinity, n and m could be different. But now this consists of x n square and x m square. Now I am just talking about how, how this limit itself will go and that I am inferring from this. So, if this is going to be c, even if I let n equals to m and both go to infinity, that limit is also going to be c. That is what I am using c for these two. Okay, so, what we just said is from this, if this correlation criteria holds, this is same as verifying this Cauchy criteria. So, that is this Cauchy criteria here. We know that this, if, if we have this Cauchy criteria, already know that that converges in mean squared sense. So, if it converges in mean squared sense, it has to converge to some random variable, right? That is why we are saying there exists some x such that this x n has converged to that random variable. We do not know what is this x, but there exists some x, it has converged. Now, to prove the other direction, we will assume that x n converges to x in some, to some random variable, then we will try to show that in this case, this correlation limit will be finite and it will be uh, so, this limit exists and it is going to be finite. Okay. We when we try to show x n square converges to x in mean squared sense, our assumption was x n square is going to be finite for all n right. You can verify that this implies that whatever limit this guy is going to converge in the mean squared sense, this limiting random variable be such that even that is going to be finite. How you are going to do this? You are going to verify by applying triangular inequality of the random variables. Okay? Just apply this and you will check the get, you will get to you, be, you can infer that expectation of x square is also going to be finite. Which inequality? Yeah? Which inequality? Triangular inequality of the random variable. So, we talked about this when we talked about Schwarz inequality right. Mm -hmm. When we talked about Schwarz inequality we talked about triangular inequality of the random variable. So, I do I think we talked if I am not talked just go and refer to there. It is in the same section where Cauchy inequality is defined. So, by just applying that you should be able to infer this. Okay, now, we know this, we want to talk about this, whether the limit exists. Now, let us take this quantity. Now, this is some algebraic manipulations we have to do and then again we will invoke triangular inequality to conclude that this is indeed true. Uh, so, this can be written as so, I will just cut short this and just I mean you can just uh, this is all algebra.
now just by expanding you will get this now what we are going to do is we are going to apply cauchy schwarz inequality in on each of these and try to derive a bound so let's try to apply cauchy schwarz on this so what did the cauchy schwarz inequality says if i have two random variable product what is the expectation is going to look like it is upper bounded by in terms of their second moments right in what fashion this was upper bounded by square root like what is the first term yeah so expectation of this into squared yeah expectation of square of this into expectation of square of this so you can similarly apply schwarz inequality to each of these terms this term and this term here and you will see that as i let m go to infinity here what is going to happen or here so notice that this is x minus x whole square by the definition i have i am assuming that xn converges to x in a mean squared sense so if that's the case what is this going to it is going to zero so this term is going to vanish and similarly what is this term is going to happen to this it is going to vanish and what about this it is going to be zero what remains right so this is now we are saying that we are, what we have shown is this limit here as mn go to infinity is equals to expectation of x square so we have now shown the existence so the limit indeed exist what is that limit that limit is expectation of x square and this x is what i have assumed that it converges to some x and now the second part i have to show is it is finite why it is finite why because i said that mean square sense convergence also implies that the limit is going to be finite so just one or two minutes as a consequence of this theorem we can derive many corollaries which i'm just going to state which are very useful you should know how to use them so corollary if xn goes to x in mean squared sense and uh, another sequence i have which goes to y in mean squared sense then you can check that expectation of xn y n goes to so this is analog version of our a deterministic case right like for, for example if a n sequence converges to a and b n con sequence converges to b what does the product sequence a n b n converges to a b exactly similar thing we have here and now then if x n converges to x in the mean squared sense then we have expectation converges to expectation so mean squared convergence also implies that the convergence in expectation okay so why is this true you can just say that you can take this y ends to be simply one all the case in that case y n are converges to y so in that case this is already implying right this xn is see expectation of xn is converging to expectation of x so these are all pretty useful results like so you should uh, know how to use them so for proof i am just keeping you can look into the book okay so let's stop here